So we're still on our road to learning some calculus here, but before we get there, we just need to understand what I mean by this, the gradient function. So uh, in previous videos, we've spoken about the pilot. So this pilot here, he's flying up, he's coming back down. This is his time in seconds, and these are his meters. He, so he's, he goes up to about 11,000 meters, he comes back down to about 2,000 meters, something like that. Now, I've also spoken about this idea moving towards instantaneous rates of change. So what I mean by instantaneous rates of change is two points drawn really close together. In this case, I've drawn two points so close together that you can barely see that it's two points at all. And I've also drawn a line between those two points, this line. Now, the instantaneous rate of change, or close enough to it, is the gradient of that line. So let's look at the gradient of that line. At the moment, the gradient of that line is 2,498. He's, in, he's increasing his um, elevation, or his altitude, by 2,498 metres every second. If we go forward a little bit, that's far enough. Uh, this time here, he's increasing his rate of elevation, or his, his rate of ascent, to 1,693 metres per second. If we go a little bit further forward, his rate of ascent has slowed down. He's only increasing it by 840 metres per second. If we go further forward, he's increasing it 405 metres per second. At the 8, well, let's go just a little bit before the 8 second mark. Just before the 8 second mark, he's increasing his rate of elevation. Sorry, it's only 162, so he's he's. Uh, ascending at 162 meters per second. At 8 seconds exactly, I can't get there exactly, or somewhere around there, his rate of elevation is almost zero. At the moment it's negative 5 point something, so he's just starting to descend again. You can see as we watch his gradient, it becomes more and more negative. Negative 830 something. At this point, that's where his rate of change is greatest. He's really, he's really coming down fast now. And then he starts to slow down his rate of descent, starts to slow down his rate of descent, and he starts to speed up his rate of descent. And now, uh, rate of ascent. And now he's really, really going upwards, the fastest he's gone upwards at all. All right. So, at the start of this video, I said we need to talk about something called the gradient function. We can create the gradient function on the same set of axes, so now it's going to be seconds against gradient. Now this point, this point E, is going to follow our point D, and at every single moment it's going to put a little dot at uh, where the gradient was. Watch this. Okay. So it's, it's, it's drawing dots. Dot, 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 dot. So it says that at... This point here, which is point 2.9, after 2.9 seconds, our rate of elevation is 1,439. This dot is now at 1,439. His rate of elevation is decreasing. You can see the dot decreasing, decreasing. His rate of elevation is decreasing. His rate of, sorry, ascent. His rate of ascent is at zero, and you can see it just touching the x-axis now. His rate of ascent is negative, because it's not a rate of ascent anymore. It's a rate of descent. Minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8, minus, minus 6. His rate of descent is now 0. He starts ascending again. And you can see us go into the positive axis. That is the gradient function. Now, I can, in a, in a moment of seconds, tell you what the gradient function is, what the equation of that gradient function is, by looking at my original function. And if you've already done that C, you can already do that. Uh, we're going to do it in a much, much different way. All right, so there is our gradient function. It is related to our original function because it's plotting the gradient of the function at each single point.